Hello everyone, it's Taylor Simone here coming at you with my first ever tutorial. Yay! Um, I This is something that I really have been wanting to do for a very long time um, and just have never really pushed myself or motivated myself to do it, but I don't know why, but it was time to do it and that's why I am here. Um, Today I think I really am just going to go over maybe how to do my basic face. Uh, we may add some eyes to it, not quite sure yet. But um, as you can see, I just freshly washed my face. This is, you can see I have combination skin, so I get really dry around like my mouth area, as you can see here. Um, and then I typically get pretty dry like around here and here. Um, and then it gets oily up in my forehead area so definitely the typical case of combination skin um, but this is just freshly washed I haven't put any moisturizer on or anything of that sort the typical moisturizer that I use is called BioClarity I have a picture of it for here now, I was first introduced to this brand when I went to BeautyCon in New York. Um, I went, I think, in 2017, um, either 2017 or 2018, I don't really remember, <laughs> but um, that was the first time that I was introduced to that brand, and that brand honestly has been heaven sent for me. Um, I use the face wash as well as the moisturizer and then I always love their Floralux which is um, a toner as well. Um, I'm out of that so I haven't reordered it but definitely a great brand to use if you're someone I know my skin the way that my skin has always kind of worked is that I never really get pimples or anything I just get very small bumps all over my face and it just really leaves for a very uneven um, skin but ever since I've been using um, this line it definitely has done wonders for my skin I typically just do a dab right on the four points of my face. Um, this is definitely a moisturizer that's not going to leave you with super oily skin. Um, to me, it just gives the right amount of moisture, but also doesn't leave my skin too oily because we don't want it to be too oily, especially in my spots where I have a more oily, oilier base um, so this is definitely a great moisturizer for that okay that is on I also will kind of fan myself a little bit before I do that um, and then I think nah, I'm gonna spray with some fix plus for anybody is not hip to this get hip to it because I love Mac it is everything that I ever needed in a makeup brand um, I think always one really great tip when you're spraying any type of prep and prime spray or a setting spray always immediately after fan yourself because that um, will help it bring the best effects or make it last as long as you need it to last. Okay, now we are going to go into my primer. Now this is something that I just started using and um, I have heard people rant and rave about this product. Um, it is Benefits Poor Professionals. Uh-oh. Benefits Poor Professionals. Um, I just started using this. I've only been using it for maybe about a month or so, and I gotta say, I absolutely love it. Now, um, it acts as kind of like not a pore filler because it doesn't clog up your pores. It just kind of creates a very seamless um, finish for your foundation. Um, I always just put a little bit on. I don't put, you don't need a whole lot with this. Um, a little bit goes a long way. Um, I think I put probably the most on my cheeks because I have fat cheeks, but <laughs> um, that is the way that I do it. 
I'll go over my nose, put a little bit on my forehead. Oops. So we're gonna go right into foundation. Um, the foundation that I use is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid um, in the shade NC50. I typically just, I will, this doesn't have a pump to it. So what I'll do is I will pour some out, dab a little bit on my hand. Not a whole lot. You don't want to pour the entire bottle on your hand and then you're left with wasted foundation. So you really want to be careful when you are taking this out of the bottle. So I do not like, I don't like to look very cakey. So I don't typically put on a whole lot of foundation so this probably I actually probably took out too much but <laughs> this is how much I poured onto my hand um, and I will take my foundation brush this is kind of just like a little kabuki brush um, and I'll take that and I will start putting on my foundation now I typically will stamp it and then I'll start swiping around. Um, now, you guys might notice that I really try to avoid my eye area because this is where I am going to put down my um, concealer. For some reason, I don't like how my concealer looks when it's on top of my foundation. I feel like because my foundation is there, um, the the foundation really takes away the brightness of the concealer for me. Um, I don't know if anyone else really has that problem, um, but that's why I don't, I try not to really put any foundation in my under eye area um, of where I'm going to be kind of putting the most concealer. I've been working from home for the last I think it's been what like two weeks now and let me tell you I am not enjoying it I thought that I would though the last job that I had I was able to work from home and you know at those times I did really enjoy it when I was able to work home because it allowed me to get a lot of other things done especially around the house but I think I think the fact that I'm being like forced to work from home is like uh why am I here I don't want to do it anymore so I definitely that's something that I've really been struggling with um, is working from home so just going through my nose um, for my girls who may have a nose piercing, um, for my foundation and concealer, I always just go right over the piercing and then once I am done with my makeup, I actually clean it up around that area just so that you're not getting any makeup within the piercing itself because it can cause it to be infected if you do if you're not cleaning that out properly. So you definitely want to make sure if you do have a nose piercing that you're cleaning that out properly and making sure that there is that you're getting no type of um, residue inside of that piercing. Um, okay. I think I am good with the foundation. Looks pretty good. Studio Fix I haven't been using for very long either. This is something new that I just started. Um, the foundation that I used before, actually I still have it here because I've been kind of hoarding it, um, is the Lancome Foundation. I don't even know how to pronounce this. I think it's T ooh, Tint Idol model wear or ultra wear <laughs> excuse me <laughs> but um this foundation is it is beautiful on the skin but it also is kind of expensive um i think it's around like 48 dollars 48 to 50 dollars um that to me that to me is expensive especially someone single living on her own like that's that's a lot to spend on a foundation so 
but it does give you wonderful results. So I always, if you, if you can spare the bucks for it, I always highly recommend that one as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go immediately into my concealer. Um, the way that I like to do my, my uh, face is I like to start with foundation. I do my concealer. Um, if I am doing eyes and brows, I'm going to do the brow first and then the eye. Um, or, but for this case, well, yeah, for this case, since I'm not doing really an eye, um, I'm just going to go into the concealer, then I'm going to go into the brow, and then we'll go directly into um, blush and then a little bit of highlighter. So we're going to go into the concealer. Concealer, I use Born This Way. If you guys can see that. That is in the shade Chestnut. Um, I have been using this concealer for a while now. Um, definitely gives me, you know, the coverage that I need and I definitely love the color range that they have with it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think this was a follow-up to my girl Jackie Ina's um, Born This Way foundation brand. So um, definitely something to use. It's really nice. Um, so I always just take this. I put one swipe underneath my eyes, another swipe. Then I will do my eyes. And I'll go back in. I'll do a little bit on the chin little bit up here and then I'll take the remaining of the concealer and make a triangle underneath the eyes so like so maybe add a little bit more to my eyes up here now I have already pre wet my beauty blender so this is already nice and um, damp for me to use um, I am one who definitely was not starting off with a damp beauty blender um i always did it dry and i feel like i still got really good results but once i started using a damp beauty blender i realized how much of a seamless effect it really um created even you know way better than what i was using i mean dry it was still doing the job but this is compared like no other. It just really creates such a seamless effect on your skin. So you guys, I've started watching some, or I've started a Netflix watch party. Now, I'm hoping that some of you guys have seen this, but have any of you all seen the show on Netflix, Madam C.J. Walker's uh, Netflix series. Um, if not, it's definitely something to watch. Now, me, I have always been someone who, it's not that I didn't like Madam C.J. Walker, it's that I really thought that she glorified the European standard of beauty. And that was something that I just didn't really think was right. Um, I thought she was trying to really push off her products on other black women so that they could look like white women and then be accepted into the society um, instead of them just being their true selves. But after watching this series, it really has given me a newfound appreciation for her. Um, I know, I think that... I'm not sure how much of, you, you know, the series is really true information, but I would assume that it's pretty true. Um, but from the series, she, you really saw that she was someone who cared more about healthy hair than she did um, about wanting the women to fit into, you know, this European society. Um, I think that she was someone, she was definitely a spectacular businesswoman and 
um, somebody who was not to be messed with. She didn't play games around with her when it came to her business and not even with her husband, you know, which is, that's a different story. But um, I think it definitely was a great series to watch and I recommend some of you, um, you know, girls to watch it. I think it's definitely something very interesting to see and how she created her business from almost nothing and you know she was out there she was hustling every day and she was getting her money and she was building her business day by day um i think that's something very encouraging for especially black women um you know to get out if you have an idea get out and start that business there are so many different ways that you can get it started there are so many different grants available for women um even women of color to start your business up um, you know, but don't let anything deter you have have your eyes set on the prize and go out and get what you want and what you deserve. Okay, so I'm done with my phone for with my concealer. Um, as you can see, doesn't it look beautiful? Like this is what I mean by how the beauty blender just creates such a seamless finish like I don't I mean just looking at this you're like wow I don't even need any powder but <laughs> but no <laughs> like it creates such a seamless such a seamless finish so now I am going to go directly into my powder um I like to use born this way again setting powder I'm not sure if you guys can see that hopefully you can um this one is in the shade translucent medium um, I also have the translucent deep born this way powder as well but I don't use that for my concealer um, I typically use this the deep one um, if I'm just doing foundation on my face maybe I'm in a quick hurry just want to put on a layer of foundation then I'll throw that translucent powder on top before I walk out the door um, but we're gonna go into this I have my little beauty blender I have I don't even know what this is called but it has like the little like the little fuzzies on there I don't know if you're able to see that it has like the little fuzzies which is helpful for like collecting powder I'm not sure what the exact name of that is but once I figure it out I will put it in the video you guys but I'm gonna take that, powder it. But what's so great about this beauty blender is that you don't have to go into your powder very uh, many times because it just collects the powder and it really spreads it evenly throughout. So we're gonna put that on my eyes. Now, if I was if I was putting eyeshadow on, I would not be putting this setting powder on my eyes. Um, I would just leave that there, leave it, leave the concealer there as a base for my eyeshadow. But since I am not, I am putting it there. Now, I also am a person who I have my eyelids get very oily um, throughout the day. So I like to put extra powder on my eyes so that I'm not having that because if it gets oily, then it will create a crease on my eyes and we don't want that to happen. So that's why I always put extra powder on my eyes if I'm doing just kind of the basic everyday look like this with, you know, no eyeshadow. Okay, so now that that is done, we are, oh wait, hold on, I didn't do my forehead. Of course. All right. And then I did my chin. Perfect. All right. So now that while we let this kind of sit, I don't let my powder sit very long because like I said, I do have combination skin. And at least in my opinion, I think when you let the powder set too long, it really um, creates like a dryness on your face and almost like kind of like a flakiness. So I don't like to keep it on very long. So um, next, we're going to go into my brow. After my brow, I'm going to take off this setting powder. Um, I do, I, right now, I'm currently using the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. 
I love this brow pencil. Um, this is the only thing that I use for my brows. I know everybody's gonna be like, what? But I only use, especially for my everyday look, um, I'm only using a brow pencil because I don't want my brows to be too harsh or kind of like too bold. Um, if I'm going for a mo more bolder look, then that is when I will use my pomade. Um, the pomade that I use is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade, um, and I have that in the shade Ebony. So if I'm looking for something a little bit more bold or like a more elevated look, then I'll definitely dip into that pomade. But just kind of for my everyday look, I only take a pencil. Um, I don't need that much. Always going to be the number one thing is having a good base to start out with. Um, because it makes it a lot easier for you to just really go in and get it done in a short amount of time. So again, I'm taking this, I, I don't know why, but I just like to twist my arm. I feel like that really gives me a lighter effect. I'm going in, I'm doing upward strokes. Once again, you wanna take it very, very lightly very lightly because you don't want to have a dark center of the brow and then the rest of your brow you know being lighter you don't want to do that so that'll look weird and even if you do i always find a good trick um, if you, you know, maybe you're going in just a little bit too hard on the center of the brow, one trick that I always find very helpful, taking a finger and literally just pressing onto the brow so that it's taking some of that color off and then it, it'll end up on your finger and then you can just wipe it off. Um, I always find that very helpful because trust me, there has been times when I've done that before. So something that is really good to do. Okay. So I think I'm good with my brow, looks pretty good. Um, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take off this powder. Um, one thing, I just take a little, like, I don't even know what this, it's a full setting brush from Eco Tools. Um, literally, I just take this. Now, if I am really looking for a really nice highlight, I will take my Max Mac Studio Fix Powder. Um, I have this in the shade NW35. Um, this is really if I'm looking for a very like bright um, highlight on my face um, or like a brightness to my face. This is kind of the color of it if you all can see. Um, if I'm looking to do that, which I'll actually do that today, I'll take this brush dip a little bit into the powder you don't need very much and then i'll take that and wipe off my powder with it i'll take it again dip 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 just a little bit wipe off the powder with it now i'm gonna do my chin i'm gonna do my forehead and then I'm gonna do my eyes. All right, looking flawless, you guys. Do you see the brightness to my face and how much I'm just kind of like very illuminated? That's what we're looking for, that is the goal. <laughs> so next, we are going to, I actually do want to set my eyebrows just a tad. Um, I do have, all right, my MAC Prep and Prime Translucent Powder. It's just a little white powder. Um, I use this sometimes to 
prep my eyebrows. Um, my eyebrows is also another area that gets oily for me throughout the day. So I always try to prep this, um, you know, with this powder so that it doesn't get oily throughout the day. So I'll take the same brush, the same full setting brush from Eco Tools. I will just really tap that into the powder, like tap it and then you'll want to tap off the excess just like that. And then I'll take it and lightly tap on my eyebrows. Again, dip it in, wipe off that accent, that excess, and then lightly tap into the brows. All right. So now that that is set, then I'm gonna go into my blush. I always like to do blush. Um, I am a blush fan. I only have a few blushes that I really like to use. Um, the kind of really the colors that look the best on my skin tone are typically going to be purples, um, maybe like a deeper pink and then a red. Um, but purple is probably the favorite bl blush that I have um, and that I really use on my skin a lot. Um, I'm going to take this Lancome blush brush and the blush that I'm going to be putting on is by one of my favorite YouTubers, Patrick Starr, from his collection with MAC. And the name of this is Take Me Home. So I'll dip into this blush. I'll do like a little swirl. And then I will smile. <laughs> and then I'll do the apples of my cheeks and then I'll bring it up. I don't know why, but I just like to really bring up my blush. I think it's definitely a very like 80s type of vibe, but I think it just looks so good on my skin. So now I'm going to do the other side once again, start with the apples and then I'll bring it up. Start with the apple, bring it up. Then next I like to go into, I like to put just a little bit on my chin. And then I will also put some on my nose. Um, I always love putting some blush on my nose just because I feel like it really gives me a very like um, blush type of look. Um, I think it's really cute. I forget who I saw. <clears throat> I saw one YouTuber do this once and I honestly, I can't remember who it is. But ever since then, I was obsessed and I have been doing it ever since and it looks wonderful. I think it just really creates such a nice look on the skin. All right. So now we're blushed out and next we're going to go into a highlighter. Now you guys, the highlighter that I'm going to use is technically not a highlighter, it's a blush. Um, it is a blush from MAC. It's called Telling Glow, but in it, it's an extra dimension blush. So it has a sheen to it, um, if you all can see that. It looks really, really beautiful on the skin, especially women of darker skin tones. I'll just do a little swatch test for you guys on the finger. Um, it just looks beautiful on the skin. So I'm gonna take my fan brush. This is a fan brush. Um, I don't know what number this is, but it's from Morphe. Um, I'm not sure the number of it, but I'll put it in the video in the description below. But I'm gonna, just gonna take this little fan brush, dip into it, and then fan the upper tip of your cheek. Now, you can bring this up. It is really your preference. 
um, if you just want to keep it subtly from you know your eye here down you can do that I am someone I like to bring it just I like to like swirl it up if that makes sense so I'll start with that and then this is what I'll do I just kind of swirl it up that way just to kind of create some more, you know, extra dimension there. So I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a really beautiful on the skin. Then we'll go into the other side. Once again, we'll just lightly brush the upper tip of your cheek and then swirl it, swirl it. Now, if you're looking for a really strong highlight, um, I definitely recommend not using a fan brush, maybe using something that's a little bit more um, concealed within the bristles, because um, that's going to give you more of a really kind of like a thicker, like really highlighted. Um, for me, I just like a little bit of a highlight. I don't need a whole lot, so. I'll add that on there and then I also like to put some on the tip of my nose <laughs> um, once again it adds to the color but also just makes it look really cute and then I will also take this and go just right below my eyebrow um, now that creates some nice sheen especially if you're not doing your eyes it's going to be something that's eye still eye catching um, especially when you know the sun or the light hits you correctly so just taking that and literally going right below the arch of my brow just adding some sheen there okay perfect so this is how we're looking so far. Now we're kind of in the final stages of the look. Um, I don't like to put on eyeliner. I know you guys are probably going to get me for that. But I just don't like eyeliner on my eyes. Um, especially for me, I feel like I have a very small eye and I have a hooded eye at that. So I feel like the eyeliner just really takes away from my eye. Um, the only time that I ever really use eyeliner is if I'm doing a really intense makeup look. Um, but other than that, I don't really like to use it. Um, so next, I think we're just going to set me off with some setting spray and then I will go into my mascara and then we'll give you a finished look. Now, one last thing before we go and I show you guys the finished look. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit of pigment in my inner corner just to kind of make it a little bit eye catching there. Um, so I'm going to take, I have a little sponge brush. I honestly, you guys do not remember where I got this brush from. It is so old and so like, beat up and damaged but um i got it from bobby brown it's an eye definer um it's really just it's like a little sponge like i always use that for like small details that i'm trying to create um so the pigment that i'm going to use is a mac pigment uh the name of it is rose and I'm picking this color. It has kind of a orange effect to it, so it'll kind of really pair with my highlight very well. So I'm just going to dip a little bit into the top here. And then I'm gonna take my sponger brush and then we're gonna dip into that and then just go right in the inner corner of the eye. actually let's wet this a little bit this will when you wet it, it it'll create a very um almost like metallic effect whereas right now i don't know if you can see it but you're just kind of getting like more of a sparkly effect we want something a little bit more metallic
All right, do you guys see that? Beautiful. The difference between a wet brush and a dry brush, especially when it comes down to these kind of pigmenty colors that have the that type of effect in it. So we're gonna dip in again, go into the other eye. I always like to curve around the eye, you guys. Um, so I'll go even just a little bit into um, like the corners of my eye and then I'll also bring it down as well to kind of create the curvature like around the eye. Okay, last minute detail but something that looks really appealing on the eye. You see how it just kind of makes you want to do a double take. All right, now for this look, I think I'm going to do more, I'm thinking like maybe an orange um, lipstick look, maybe a combination with a brown. Um, I always just kind of like to keep my lips pretty um, neutral when it comes down to doing a lip for like an everyday or something like that. So I'm going to go grab a lipstick and I will be right back. All right, everyone, and this is the finished look. I have on my little sweater. It has little bell, bell sleeves that I love. I got my hair all nice and curled. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for attending and watching my first YouTube tutorial. Um, there will definitely be more to come and look for it, watch out, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content. Um, and thank you guys so much. Love you. Bye.